All right, Shalom. As always, before I begin, I'd like to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His beloved Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. What you just heard right now is the true name of the Heavenly Father and His beloved Son in the Paleo Hebrew, okay? Which is the pure language spoken of in the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, which has been brought back to the nation of Israel <clears throat> through faith, okay? Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls God, Jehovah, Yahweh, so on and so forth, okay? Yahweh is his real name, which means he exists, or he is. Bahashem means in the name. And Yahweh Shai, Salaki brothers. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Heavenly Father's, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Heavenly Father's beloved Son, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, uh, Yeshua, so on and so forth, okay? Yahweh Shai is his true name, which means he delivers or the deliverer, all right? And this is the true depiction of our Lord and Savior as well as his Father, okay? And as you can see, the title of this lesson is the true image of our Savior, all right? And pretty much the inspiration of this video came uh, through a video I had watched from the beloved apostle uh, Gabar, where he was speaking about um, the deception of Bishop Nathaniel, okay? Because although he's giving our people the understanding of the image of the Heavenly Father's Son, he still doesn't have the, the name right, okay? And like I had said in the beginning of this lesson, Yahawashai is his true name, okay? <clears throat> so Lord's will, this video is edifying and straight to the point. I just want to, you know, because a lot of new brothers are starting to come into the fold of the truth. And hey, sometimes you need to go back to the basics, just like the apostles always say, and shed some light on, you know, certain topics like the image of our Lord and Savior, okay? Because through the scriptures, we have the understanding that he's not a so-called white man, okay? He's a so-called, you know, as the world likes to call him, Negro, okay? And we're, of course, first and foremost, we're going to back it up with the scriptures, all right? But... The reason why our Lord and Savior has been depicted as a so-called white man is because of prophecy, okay? Matter of fact, we'll start right there. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Um, come on, I'm going to start at 8. <clears throat> yeah, come on, the point is in the 8th verse. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, okay? And that depicts and describes the mannerism of America, okay? Which is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures. Spiritually Sodom because of this, you know, I don't, man, I forget how it's called, man, but the L LGBTQ com uh, community, and all these different ways that these people, you know, move themselves, okay, in a very mo manner. And spiritually, Egypt, because this is the biggest and most grievous bondage that our people have been in, okay? To the point where our people don't even realize that they're in slavery, okay? And not only is the nation of Israel in slavery, but the whole world is, all right? And this next line is the point. It says, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay. Yahweh Shai wasn't crucified in America. He was crucified down in the Middle East. Okay. Showing you that our Lord, his image was crucified. Okay. And that was done nowhere else but here in Babylon the Great. All right. Where our Lord, his image was crossed out and changed into a so-called white man, all right? Now I have this quick article to 
show you the deception and how the image my friend let me get there real quick let's go to pinterest real image of jesus this is what you get you know a so-called white man long hair which is off leper skin you know what i'm saying this is not the image of the heavenly father's son okay and we're of course we're gonna back it up with the scriptures <clears throat> But, you know, this is just an article I had looked up. It says, where did the popular image of, as the world calls Jesus, come from? All right. It says, it is the face known around the world. Though it sometimes appears with different shades of skin, the general characteristics are consistent. Long hair, a beard, and a slender and somber face. This face is portrayed through paintings, sculptures, crucifixes, and movies, all right? And like we just read in Revelation 11, verse 8, the image of our Lord has been completely X'd out, okay? Completely flipped uh, upside down, okay? As it says, it is the face immediately recognized as jesus christ and that's you know what our people think when you know the topic of the heavenly father's son is brought up all right a leprous skin white man with long hair coming in the name of peace okay when the scriptures clearly contradict that all right matter of fact let's get there real quick and Book of Exodus 15. This is Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Okay? Because that's also something that the world gets wrong. Okay? The Heavenly Father is not a man of just love. Okay? The Heavenly Father is, hey, as his name is. He is, all right, the existing one. He created everything. He created, of course, the emotion of love, but he also created the emotion of hate, all right? We'll get that next in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 7, all right? It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things, okay? So the Heavenly Father is a well-rounded person that is not only about love, okay? And, hey, the scriptures clearly depict that. During the time of Noah, what did he do? He killed everyone in the world except eight souls, okay? What did he do with, in the time of Moses, all right? This is the kind of deception that the so-called white man has done through a process of iconoclasm, okay? And real quick, I think I have the, the definition pulled up in the Edamon. Gone. It says, 1797, in reference to an act of breaking or destroying idols physically, figuratively from 1858, in reference to beliefs. Gone. But that's basically the point, okay? Breaker or destroyer of images. And this is the process that Esau has done from the time of the Renaissance era, all right? From then, Esau has been doing nothing but painting himself in all the relics and images of our Lord and Savior, okay? To push on that agenda that they are the chosen, okay? So from there, going back to the article, it says, um, right, come on, lucky, right here. It says, but as we show in our article, what did and didn't uh, Jesus look like? As we know, his real name is Yahawashai. The Bible reveals very little about what Yahawashai looked like, which is off too. All right, that's why the scripture says. In fact, we'll go there next. In the book of Isaiah. 
28, verse 10, okay? It says, For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here little and there little, okay? And why do I bring that out? Because through the scriptures, from precept upon precept, line upon line, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we have a description of how the Lord looks like, okay? So, you know, people don't study, all right? But as it says, and what it does reveal contradicts the popular image you may have in your mind. And hell yeah, it does, man. Let's get a couple scriptures that describe the true image of our Lord. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, con, verse 9. It says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. All right? Now answer me this. Who in the world has woolly hair? Okay? Let's go to Duck, Duck, go real quick. Woolly hair. Boom. Well, of course, you're going to have some Edomites up in here, but it's predominantly Jake, okay? Jake with that woolly hair, all right? Which goes to show that the Heavenly Father is not a so-called white man, okay? This is not him. Look at this, man. Shit. <laughs> hey, it pisses you off, but at the end of the day, this is why we're here, okay? To show the people the true image of the Heavenly Father and to throw down these certain delusions that Esau has put up, all right? Reading on, it says, And the hair of his head, like the pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Okay, which goes into the description of the chariot of the Heavenly Father. Okay, if you can receive it. Con, so from there, going back to the article, um, Dr. Go. <clears throat> Con, so. jump down a little and damn Salakia because the main inspiration of why our um of why Yahweh is depicted as a so-called white man is through um a certain Greek god called Serapis Christus okay and when you get the, uh, the description of how he looks and you compare it to the way Yahweh is depicted to the world, you can see a, a big resemblance, okay? Come on. Let me start right here. It says, Choosing to depict Yahweh with long hair was not a random decision on the part of these early artists. They chose to portray Yahweh this way because the male gods of the Greco-Roman pantheon almost <clears throat> excuse me almost always were depicted with long hair. In Greek and Roman art loose long hair was a mark of divinity. In letting his hair down, Yahawashai took on an aura of divinity that set him apart from the disciples and onlookers who are represented with him. Alright? Which when you go into the scriptures Oh man, Salak, you forget where that's at. It's in Corinthians. Go on. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Which completely cuts this image, all right? And completely cuts what we read in this... Um, a paragraph of the article of Yahweh having long hair, okay? 
as it said, it was that custom was taken from the Greco-Roman Empire where it was a token of divinity. OK. So going further down in the article. Come on, this is the point. Right here, it says a full bearded face suggests authority, majesty, and power, and may be seen <clears throat> and may be seen in the portraits of the senior male deities of the Roman pantheon, Jupiter and Neptune, or even the Egyptian import Serapis. Okay, which goes to show that the uh the, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ was an image that was created off of these different greek gods okay primarily serapis okay i think i have a, a tab regarding him too come on. look at that and when you go into the um who serapis was it was nothing but a greek god okay and people like to argue that the story of Yahawashai was taken from him, okay? Which is nothing but another strong delusion. Woo, look at that, man. That's Yahawashai, okay? And these are uh, certain relics that are found that Esau has manipulated and whitewashed to the point where you get something like this, okay? But there are many, um, you know, artifacts that show likewise, okay? Case in point, this image that we just stumbled upon, okay? And when you go into certain uh, Russian churches, they have icons of Yahawashai and the disciples being so-called, you know, black people, okay? I hate using that word, man, but that's how the world depicts our people, you know? And of course, it gives you more um, images of these different Greek gods, Jupiter, Neptune, and Serapis. And as it says right here, artists took the most notable characteristics of divinity from the Greco-Roman world and combined them into an image of a roughly 30-year-old man devising the image recognizable as Yahawashai today. The slender, pale, bearded, long-haired uh, Jesus, okay? Because that's who that man is, okay? And this is something that our people are worshipping day in and day out. Calling upon the name of Jesus. Which is what they think about. This is the man that they think about when they say that name. Alright? A God that they have no understanding. Matter of fact, let me get that in the book of Acts. There's a spot on no, no. This is the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 23. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Okay? And that's the two-third of our people. Okay? As well as these other nations that worship Jesus. Okay? An unknown God who they have no understanding of. Talking about he's all love. Jesus is love. No, he's not, man. Scriptures say otherwise. Okay? In fact, let me get that. Man. In the book of... This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 66. Verse 15. It says, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and... And his rebuke with flames of fire. But I thought he was all love. And this is the, 
deception of this like i said earlier this is you know that deceiving serpent okay from the garden this dude has been doing nothing but you know supplanting our people into believing a false image and a false ideology okay because even when um during the 14th century and even back then when esau was coming to the western hemisphere going to the caribbean islands and here on this soil that most of us brothers are in in america he pushed that philosophy of christianity okay verse 16 for by fire and by his sword will yahweh plead with all flesh and the slain of yahweh shall be many okay that's what the lord's coming back to do he's not going to come back with cupcakes and you know rainbows okay heavenly father is going to come here with vengeance okay because of what the world believes he actually is so like for what the world believes who he is okay lord's well i said that right Salaki brothers but from there i'm gonna pull up another scripture in the book of daniel as well 10th chapter starting at the fifth verse it says then i lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz his body also was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire. And this is the point. And his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. All right. Let's look up that word polished brass. Or the color of it, Salakia. Yeah. There you go. All right. Boom. So-called white people don't have that. It's a different pigment that us, you know, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans have. All right. That ain't this. <clears throat> so from there, going to another scripture that describes our Savior. Revelation chapter 1, um, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one on oh, Salaki, the, uh, the seven candlesticks, of course, is a, rep a representation of the menorah, but it also, um, it talks about the seven churches in Asia Minor. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to the foot and girt about the paps with the golden girdle his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow all right and like we had for, uh, gone into last last couple minutes the heavenly father has woolly hair and who has woolly hair today judah okay you so-called negroes and as well as the other tribes too you know puerto ricans some, I remember a brother um, in the Spanish camp, he had made the point, because those brothers had gone to Mexico. They were speaking about how they had went to visit the different Mayan temples, so on and so forth, so forth. And they saw, you know, Issachar. They saw many northern tribes that looked exactly like Judah, okay? But they were speaking that Latin language, all right? And of course, the way that they moved, it wasn't the spirit of Judah, which goes to show that, hey, we're all from the same father, okay? And we're all a big family. Why? Because we suffer the same persecution. We have been manipulated and deceived, robbed, ravished by the same person, okay? Actually, let me, uh, I think that's in Jeremiah 50. Damn, Salaki, brothers. Come on, this is Jeremiah 50, verse uh, 33. It says, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, 
southern and northern kingdom have been oppressed together right here on this soil that most of us brothers are standing in, as well as throughout the four winds of the earth, okay? Wherever Jake is, you damn well know that they're being persecuted by the so-called white men, all right? And all that took them captives, held them fast, they refused to let them go. And who did that happen? Who did that happen to? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Puerto Ricans, Haitians, Guatemalans, Panamint, uh, Colombians, so on and so forth, okay? We all are under the same boat, okay? Jumping back to Revelation 1, verse 13. Salaki 14, it says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. You don't see that there. You see some blue eyes on that motherfucker, man. <clears throat> Verse 15, and it says, And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. All right? Let's look that up. Burn brass. There you go. You know what I'm saying? I didn't burn brass. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but going back, it says, And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Okay? So basically showing you that the Heavenly Father is not a leprous so-called white man that has long hair that comes in the spirit of peace. No. Okay? Of course, the Heavenly Father has shown peace to our people. But just like it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time of love and there's a time to hate. There's a time of peace, but there's also a time of war. And right now we are in the time where judgment is going to be poured out by the Heavenly Father through vengeance, okay? And this is, you know, the topic that we're going into is something that scares these so-called white people, okay? These Edomites. Esau Edom is the so-called white man that the Bible speaks about, okay? Esau has spent trillions of dollars into hiding these different relics that show that we are the chosen people of the Heavenly Father. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right? We are the chosen ch chosen people of the Heavenly Father. And hey, through iconoclasm, that's been stripped away from us. Okay? And matter of fact, Salaki, first and foremost, the scriptures testify about that. But the history is a further, you know, assurance of that. Okay? As it's written in Jeremiah 17 and 14, our inheritance was going to be wiped completely out of us, okay? But in the land of our captivity, we were going to be brought back to the understanding of who we are. And most importantly, understanding that our power, the Lord of the nation of Israel, is a so-called black man, just like the people are, okay? Matter of fact, I'm going to go back to Pinterest. Because I had looked up Russian church icons. Not that one. This one. Boom. There you go, man. And all you got to do is research. You know? That's who our Lord and Savior is. Okay? And of course, Esau likes to tamper with the images. Putting that long hair on them. But that goes to show, man, that the Heavenly Father is a so-called Negro. He's not a white man. Look at that. All right. There you go. Okay. But hey, man, uh, Lord's will, this video is edifying and straight to the point. 
you know, Lord's will, you brothers understand. And Lord's will, I put it clear upon tables that the Heavenly Father is a so-called, um, you know, man of color. And hey, if you're starting to wake up to the understanding that you are an Israelite, continue to, you know, pray on the names of the Heavenly Father. His true name, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, okay? Because the Heavenly Father and His Son are one. Matter of fact, let's get that. Book of John. I'm not going to put it in my scriptures. It's locked. So bear with me for a second, brothers. I think that's 14. <clears throat> I'm going to start at um, 8. This is John chapter 14, verse 8. It says, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Yahweh said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Okay? And the reason that I bring that out is, if the Son of the Heavenly Father is a so-called man of color, then you, you're damn well right that the Heavenly Father's, the Heavenly Father, excuse me, is a man of color as well, okay? But that's it on that. So, hey, Lord's will, you know, when you're praying to the Heavenly Father in the true names, this is the image that pops up, okay? A man of color that is not about only love, Okay. So with that, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His beloved Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect that have been scattered abroad the four winds of the earth and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in sincerity and in truth. Okay. And until next time, a Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham. Okay? Shalom Akiyam.